Yeah, I knew this was coming. We knew it. Our The pastors don't know anything. And those of us on YouTube who try to tell them stuff, they just think we're all conspiracy theorists and we don't know what we're talking about. Well, here's something you need to share with your loved ones who might still listen that are, that are still belonging to brick-and-mortar churches. Here's what's wrong with them. Because they belong to, because they get the 501c3 tax deduction, they have to listen to the government. Now listen to this. This is on the Christian Post. Just got it in my email from our sister Crystal who lives out in Nevada. It says, the title, 2700 evangelicals warn against politicizing coronavirus urge Christians to take the vaccine. Have they done their research or not? They're just probably being told it's just like a flu vaccine. It'll pr we got to get everybody vaccinated against this coronavirus so we can all get back to work and our lives as normal and everybody can go to church as usual. And they have no idea that it's going to change your DNA and come with that. Uh, okay, someone told me yesterday it's a gel, nano gel, gel. The word gel is in it. Why can I not remember it? <sighs> anyway, it's a tattoo to prove you got the vaccine. And it goes, supposedly, it's going to go green. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Prince William has a scar that glows green, too. And he's a reptilian. They're all part of the reptilian bloodline. All right. Oh, Trump says he spoke to God about the economy. Believes God will help him rebuild it again. Boy, is he pulling out all the stops or what to get reelected? Well, we'll see what's going to happen about that. I don't think there will be an election to you. Anyway. It shows uh, Vice President Pence here and Dr. Anthony Fakey uh, standing in front of a sign of the, let's see, he is, uh, Dr. Fakey is the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. <coughs> yeah, right. Yeah, he's way more than that. And Vice President Mike Pence. Okay, that's all that says. At the White House. A coalition of more than 2,700 high-profile evangelicals. What is an evangelical? I always thought it was a, 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 a basic... Uh, what is the word? Um... We believe in the word of God as it's written. We spread the gospel as it's supposed to be spread. Believe in getting people baptized. Something most of them. Uh, an evangelical. They, they call Billy Graham an evangelical. Someone that spreads the gospel. Well, a true evangelical believes in the baptism of the Holy Spirit as well and does that too. But you don't sit, hear about that going on with most of them. Anyway... I digress. Let's start over. A coalition of more than 2,700 high-profile evangelicals spanning the fields of science and religion have signed onto a statement billed, quote, a Christian statement on science for pandemic times, unquote. And that's a link you can click on, which warns against the politis, politization of the new coronavirus and urges Christians to take appropriate action against it, including taking a vaccine when it's ready. You see, I did a video on churches Oh, my goodness, how long ago. Going to be playing a part in giving people the mark of the beast. 
but I thought it was going to be the actual sticking the little rice shaped thing into your right hand or on your forehead or whatever. It's going to be a tattoo. Now we know how it's going to be, a, how it's going to go on your forehead. It's not something they have to stick under the skin. It'll go right on top and zap, it'll be embedded. I don't know how that'll feel. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Taking, including taking a vaccine when it's ready. We are deeply concerned about the polarization and politicization of science in the public square when so many lives are at stake. Yeah, right. So many died of the COVID. Not. The word science has become a weapon in the culture wars. Scientists are vilified and their findings ignored, while conspiracy theories go viral. Sadly, Christians seem just as susceptible to these trends. I wonder why. Do you think maybe they have some wisdom and discernment from the Lord? Yeah, I think so. Thoughtful Christians may disagree on public policy in response to the coronavirus. But none of us should ignore clear scientific evidence. The statement published online by the nonprofit organization BioLogos says, quote, We call on all Christians to follow the advice of public health experts and support scientists doing crucial biomedical research on COVID-19, unquote. So that's from a quote from the Bio Logos. And that's in blue, so you can click on it and check that out. Bio Logos was founded, oh brother, by the U.S. National Institutes of Health, that's the NIH, Director Francis Collins, a devout Christian geneticist and his wife to foster discussions about the harmony of oh, let me let me say that again biologos was founded by u.s national institutes of health director francis collins do you really think any real devout christian is going to be placed in a position of director of the NIH? <sighs> Absolutely not. Do not believe these labels they throw on people to get you to sell your soul to the devil. That's all this is about. It's getting the Christians to be change their DNA so you're not a Christian anymore. Do not buy it, people. You need to share this far and wide if it'll go. I may have to put it up on my Brighteon account. I only have two videos over there. A devout Christian geneticist and his wife to foster discussions about the harmony between science and biblical faith. Collins was honored earlier this year with the Templeton Prize, a financial award of $1.3 million for his storied career using science to advocate for the integra integration of faith and reason. Oh yes, let's all reason together why we should all take this vaccination and the accompanying tattoo so we will be good little boys and girls and go straight to hell for it. Some of the influential evangelicals who have already signed the statement include Bishop 
Claude Alexander. That would be probably a priest, a uh, Catholic, but not necessarily. There are churches who call their elders bishop. Okay, Bishop Claude Alexander, senior pastor. Excuse me, let me keep reading. Senior pastor of the Park Church, Charlotte, North Carolina. National Association of Evangelicals President Walter Kim, William Phillips, a distinguished professor of physics at the University of Maryland, who was a co-recipient of the Nobel Prize of Physics for development of methods to cool and trap atoms with laser light in 1997. Isn't that amazing, brothers and sisters? We should really follow that guy. And Samuel Rodriguez, president of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference. Oh my, what a way to get all the Hispanic people on board for taking this vaccine. Oh, you men will pay. You will pay leading people straight to hell. Yes, you are. The signers affirm that they uphold, quote, this is a quote now, uphold the authority of God's word and see science as a tool to understand God's world, period, unquote. We don't need anything but the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. Yes or no, brothers and sisters. We don't need science, and we don't need you people telling us how to see science as a tool to understand God's world. You need the Bible, the Word of God. And if y'all don't repent, you're going to go to hell along with everybody else that you get to take the vaccination. Oh my, oh my. The statement comes in the wake of the fragmented response in the Christian community to the coronavirus, which has fed skepticism about how it has been handled and challenged advice from public health officials on issues such as the wearing of masks to stem the spread of the disease. Here is a picture. I'm pretty sure that dude is from TBN or one of them shows I've seen him on television. A seat. From left to right. N-A-I-A N-I-A-I-D Director Dr. Anthony Fakey U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Jerome Adams and NIH Director Dr. Francis Collins. Oh, that's who that is. No, he's not from TBN. That is the so-called Christian Director of the NIH, Dr. Francis Collins. They're sitting there. Casper! This is very important. Stop barking. Come here. He's talking. He's talking. The NIH director, Dr. Francis Collins, is talking. The guy next to him is in a Navy suit. He's the U.S. Surgeon General. Hey, come here and please be quiet, Jasper. Please be quiet. Dogs. Good boy, good boy, good boy, you did your job. Now lay down and be quiet. Good boy, yeah. Yeah, you let me know. Someone's out there. Now lay down. And then you got Tony Fakey sitting right beside the U.S. Journal. And he's just uh, smiling at what he's saying. Yeah, and everybody in the back row smiling too. Or taking notes. Mm-hmm. Yep. A vocal minority of churches also spoke out against calls from federal and local government authorities to close their churches amid the new coronavirus pandemic, risking fines and arrests. As recently as Sunday, North Carolina Bishop Patrick Wooden Sr. of the conservative 
Upper Room Church of God in Christ in Raleigh slammed Dr. Anthony Fakey, who is director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and member of the White House Coronavirus Task Force, as a backslidden Catholic and self-professed professed humanist who is being used as a political tool by the left. Good for that man, speaking out against him. Humanists do not believe in prayer. Humanists do not believe that God intervenes. Humanists do not believe that we need help from the Lord at all. That may be one of the reasons he could easily recommend that the churches be closed, but he fumbled and waffled when they suggested perhaps the protests should be curtailed because they spread the virus, he asserted. Hmm, perhaps the protests should be curtailed because they spread the virus. This man from the Church of God place asserted. The statement acknowledges that while Christians have a valid reason to be skeptical of the scientific process, it would be unwise to dismiss their research. It is appropriate for Christians to be skeptical of claims made by scientists who speak outside their area of expertise. Oh, as long as you're speaking in your area of expertise, then you must know what you're talking about, right? Right. No. If it not, doesn't line up with the Word of God, we firmly reject claims that science has somehow shown God does not exist or faith is mere superstition. Exactly. That's where science gets you. Such claims go beyond what science is capable of investigating. We lament the times when science and medicine have been misused to perpetrate atrocities like the racist Tuskegee experiments. But Christians should listen to scientists and doctors when they speak in their area of expertise, especially when millions of lives are at stake, the statement warns. It also explains, and they don't want millions of lives to not die. They want us dead. They want depopulation. They are such hypocrites. I could just smack them all. But God probably wouldn't like that. That's not the proper response, is it? It also explains that while some of the scientific guidance on the virus may seem confusing at times, it's simply the nature of the process of trying to fight a virus they are still learning about each day. Yeah, okay, that's probably the most truth in the whole thing here. They are it's simply the nature of the process of trying to fight a virus they are still learning about each day. And yet, there's already a vaccine out for it. In Russia and President Trump has his uh, what is it called uh, operation uh, fast full speed ahead or something about get him get it get her done get her done get the vaccine made and get it out there get it to all the military to go door to door and force it into everybody that is not democracy President Trump or anybody else. And we have the right to say no to any vaccine. My body, my choice. If I can choose to murder an infant inside of me, I can choose to say no to a vaccine. Do you all got that? Experts have been communicating their knowledge in real time as the pandemic progresses. Oh, it has not progressed. They keep inflating the numbers to the point where they got people scared to death to not wear a mask. It just kind of aggravates me a little bit. Which has led to some confusion. 
In the early days, they advised the public against masks when supplies were needed for health care workers. But later, they changed their message in response to more data. A change in expert advice is not a sign of weakness or unreliability, but of good scientific practice and honesty, it notes. Yeah, well, we learned some things about the virus that we've decided now y'all need to wear masks. Mm -hmm. On the biggest points, scientific predictions have been proven right. Scientists said, Stay home orders would reduce cases. And thankfully, those measures worked. Scientists predicted that ending quarantine too soon would increase cases. And that has been the case. Do you get what they're saying? They ended the quarantining too soon. Letting people go back out to the beaches, letting some things be opened. People could now go buy clothes if they needed them. As long as they wore their masks and practiced social distancing. Oh, but they were wrong and the cases have increased, have they not? Supposedly. While any individual scientist may be biased, the community actively critiques each other's work to reduce bias and errors until together they develop a consensus on what the data are saying. It's not a perfect process and one can always find dissenters, but scientists working together are far more accurate than one person's theory on YouTube. Notice how they had to throw that in on one person's theory on YouTube? <sighs> now what happened? Here it is. Scientists are trained to communicate where the consensus is uncertain and to not overstate conclusions. They may speak in sound bites in an interview, but if you listen a bit longer, you will hear the caveats. So when Dr. Fakey, the nation's leading infectious disease expert, gag, tells us what scientists have learned about this infectious disease, he should be listened to. I wonder if that man's even fully human. Do you wonder, brothers and sisters in Christ? He is so evil. Why has he been in his position for so many years? On the reopening of churches, signers of the statement agree that, quote, Christians need to balance God's call to meet together with God's call to protect the vulnerable among us, period, unquote. So not only are they advocating taking the vaccine, they're agreeing to keep their churches closed to protect the vulnerable among us. How nice. Our faith calls us to sacrifice ourselves for others and accept temporary limitations on our freedoms because we have a permanent and complete freedom in Christ. Hebrews 10.34 Our faith helps us be humble and patient when discussing contentious issues, Ephesians 4, 2 and 3. Now they're quoting the Bible at us. It is our faith, not science, that overcomes fear and brings hope, unquote. The statement acknowledges that, quote, the economic losses and social hardships of the pandemic are painful, 
and thoughtful Christians will disagree on how to balance those needs with health needs, period, unquote. Nevertheless, it urges, it urges Christians to wear masks, get vaccinated, correct misinformation, work for justice, and pray. Work for justice and pray. I just want to gag. This is so over-the-top hypocritical. It is so disgusting. Correct misinformation, that means tell the people who are telling you not to take the vaccine, correct them and tell them, we must all stop politicizing the coronavirus and just do as we're told so we can just all get back to work already and church. Mm-hmm. Quote, here's another quote. Mask rules are not experts taking away our freedom, but an opportunity to follow Jesus. Oh, oh, wait, wait, let me read that over. But an opportunity to follow Jesus' command to love our neighbor as ourselves, it says. Well, that was unquote, it says. Yeah. That's what the Word of God says. Mask rules are not experts taking away our freedom, but an opportunity to follow Jesus' command to love our neighbor as ourselves. That is why I wear mine from my room to the outdoors. But as a rule, I would not wear that thing all day long if you paid me. Christians are called to love the truth. We should not be swayed by falsehoods. We are called to love the truth. Oh, this just makes me want to sock somebody. I'm sorry, Lord, but it does. Quote, Get vaccinated against COVID-19. When a safe and effective vaccine is available... And as directed by a physician, a large fraction of the population needs to be vaccinated to develop a herd, the herd immunity, which protects the immunocompromised and others who cannot be vaccinated. Vax oh my gosh. Tell me you're not saying this. Listen to this. Vaccination is a provision from God that will prevent disease, not only for ourselves, but for the most vulnerable among us. Matthew 25, 31 through 36, unquote. Oh, seriously, where can I throw up? I will leave the link in the description box. Please share this video with those you know who are Christians and don't know the truth. Whether they read it or not, does it, it's not up to you. All you can do is be a messenger for the Lord, send them the message, and pray they'll read it. I ask that you would in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video so it'll go up and stay up and over myself and my computer and my internet connection and over each and every single one of you and your devices and your internet connections. May God be found true and every man a liar. In this case, all these are lies, lies, and more lies. Have a blessed day, brothers and sisters. And keep looking up. Our redemption draws nigh.